وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى Today we're going to carry on the explanation of the book Nawaqidhul Islam written by Shaykh Al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah Ta'ala The Shaykh Rahimahullah he said Al-Naqidh Al-Khamis The fifth nullifier we're on Sah? We're going to start the fifth nullifier The Shaykh Rahimahullah he said الشيخ يسد من أبغض شيئا مما جاء به الرسول ولو عمل به كفر does it say إجماعا for you does your copy say كفر إجماعا yeah which copy do you have where is it no 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 we don't have memory have it Abdul Bahs Qasim's one. The one he uses. Ah, not that one. Huh? I can see it. Many stahza, anybody who mocks, what does he mock? Bishayin min, sorry, man abghada, anyone who dislikes, sorry, man abghada, anyone who shows or dislikes, hates, shay'an mimma ja'a bihi al-rasul, something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. وَلَوْ عَمِلَ بِهِ even if he does it what does it mean he does it? he comes with a good deed he prays the salah like it but he hates the salah كَفَارَةً he's a disbeliever إِجْمَعًا by consent وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى and the evidence for this is the statement of Allah ذَلِكَ that is بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُ that is because they have disliked مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ that which Allah has sent down فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He nullified their righteous deeds Allah nullified their deeds Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Al-Mas'alatul Ula the first point the first point that we need to know point number one that the disliking the Qurh to dislike something يَنْقَصِمُ إِلَىٰ قِسْمَيْنِ is categorized into two it is categorized it's categorized into two the first of them is طَبِيعِيٌ a natural one what is it? it's natural and the second one is شَرْعِيٌ legislational the great scholar of language Imam Raghib Al-Asfahani Al he has a book called Mufradat Al-Quran and in this book what he does is that he takes words that are in the Quran that are used in the Quran and he defines those words so when he came to the word Qur in the Quran 
and he spoke about it in his book Mufradat Mufradat Al Quran. He said that the word kurh means al mashakkah alati tanalul insan. It's the hardship that a person goes through or endures. Min kharij ma yuhmal alayhi bi above that which he carries, or that which he is told to carry. So it's the hardship that the person goes through. Uh, it's the hardship that a person goes goes through due to somebody placing burden over him. Somebody's placing something onto him and it's above his ability. He's something he can't do. It could happen from this angle since something is tabi'i and it's legislational. The tabi'i means something that you naturally dislike. Okay? You dislike it, what? You naturally dislike it. Your fitrah, you just don't naturally like this thing. And there's something you, sh it, through the sharia, you don't, you dislike. And so because there are two different types, it could happen. A person saying, Inni uriduhu wa akrahu. I want this and I hate it. I want it. And I dislike it. Or I like it and I dislike it. Both can come together. How is that possible? In terms of my nature, I want this. My tabi'ah wants it. And I dislike this because of the sharia. And because of the logic. Logically, this is what is bad for me. It's very harmful. A person can say, I like fizzy drink, but I dislike it. I like it min haythu al but I dislike it what? Min haythu al Logically, I don't like it because it causes a lot of illnesses. It's not good for you, so I don't like it from that angle. But I like it because it tastes nice. So both can come together. ولذلك Allah said in the ayah, "Kutiba alaykum al qitalu," fighting has been made, prescribed onto you, has been made obligatory on you. وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ And it's something which you dislike. So when Allah said in this ayah, this is ayah Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 216. Allah says here, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالِ The battle, fighting has been made what? It's been made obligatory, it's been prescribed onto you. وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ And it's something which you dis, something you dislike. Something you don't like. Wahua? Wahua kurhu lakum. What does Allah mean you dislike it? A takrahuna who you dislike it, min haythu taba. Naturally, you don't like it. You don't like it naturally. You just naturally don't like it. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to see why humans don't naturally like fighting for. If you want to see the difference between these two types of kur, dislike, go to the kitab Al-Furuq by Al-Askari. There's a kitab Al-Furuq al lughawiyah go to his one. And also go to the kitab Al-Mu'jam Al-Maqayis, Al-Mu'jam Al-Wasit, Al-Mu'jam Maqayis al lugha and of course, uh, Mufradat Al-Quran by uh, Al-Raghib Al-Asbahani, Rahimahullah. Sahib Al-Isad Al-Arab, he says that when it came to this ayah, القتال, that fighting has been made obligatory on you, لكم, and it's something which you dislike. In Lisan al Arab, it said that it means you dislike fighting. The reason you dislike fighting is. The burden and the hardship that it has onto you and the toughness that is in fighting. People don't like it. It's too much hard work. It's too much effort. Look what he said after that. And that doesn't mean 
that the disbelievers dislike the obligation of the fighting. لأن الله تعالى because Allah تبارك وتعالى لا يفعل إلا ما فيه الحكمة والصلاح. Allah does not do except that which is in it hikmah, wisdom. And also in it is what? The prosperity of the creation. But the reason why the believers, they dislike it is because in it is mashaqqah. And this is, this is naturally the characteristics of human beings. We don't like hard work and effort. So in other words, all of these scholars that I brought, Al-Furuq by Askari and Al-Mu'jam Al-Wasit and Al-Lisan Al-Arab and of course Mufradat Al-Quran, all of them are categorizing the dislike in the two types that I mentioned. But if the person dislikes that which Allah wa Taala obligated, or he hates the legislation of Allah, this is where Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is talking about. When he says, "Man abghada shay'an mimma jaa bihi rasul anyone who dislikes that which the messenger came with, walaw amil bihi even if he does it." So the kurh cannot be kurhu shar'i. This is kufr. You can't hate Allah's legislation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't hate it. The reason is because then this is disliking the hikmah and the salah and the prosperity that Allah has placed in this for you. So you're not allowed to dislike it. You're not allowed to like dislike what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. This takes you out of the fold of Islam. And we're going to bring the ijma'at of the ulama soon bi idnillah al kareem This ayah, kutiba alaykum al qital wa huwa kurhul lakum. Al Imam al Badawi rahimahullah, when he came to his tafsir, ma'alim al tazil, he said, wa huwa kurhul lakum, ay shaqun alaykum. Kurhul lakum means that it's hard onto you. And he said, Qala ba'du ahli al-ma'ani, some of the scholars of the language said, Bagawi saying this, Hadha al-kur' min haythu nufur al-tab'i, anhu, that this dislike, he said, it is the, the person's tabi'an, their nature is repulsive towards it. Lima fihi mu'natu al-mal, because what's in it is what? You have to spend your own money by going there. مَشَقَّةُ النَّفْسِ The hardship that the body and the, the soul is put through. وَخَطَرُ الرُّوحِ The dangers of when you go there, you, your children can lose you, you could die in that battle, and etc. لَا أَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُوا أَمَرَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى That is not because they dislike the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Qurtubiyyu in his tafsir, he said, that وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ كُرْهُ الطَّبَعَ It is that the person's nature dislikes it, he said. وَإِنَّمَا كَانَ الْجِهَادُ كُرْحًا He said that the jihad was, is, disliked لِأَنَّ فِيهِ إِخْرَاجُ الْمَالِ Because in it is what? Bringing out wealth. وَمُفَارَقَةِ الْوَطَنِ The person leaves their own town and hometown. وَالْأَهْلِ The person leaves their family. وَالتَّعَرُّضُ بِالْجَسَدِ لِلْجِرَاحِ The person's body, it goes through wounds. وَقَطْعُ الْأَطْرَافِ The person's fingertips, the body parts all go. فَكَانَتْ كَرَاهِيَتُهُمْ لِذَلِكَ The people's dislike is connected to that. لا أنهم كره فرض الله تعالى. That doesn't mean they dislike Allah's Allah's command. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin he brought a faida latifa here, a very good benefit, and that is, he said that كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم. He said the word وهو كره لكم. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said, في محل نصب حال. He said it's what? في محل نصب على الحال. 
that word wa huwa kurhu lakum as a jumla as a sentence it sits in the place of a hal a situation wa dhamiru huwa and the pronoun which is wa huwa kurhu lakum the huwa in there يعود على القتال it goes back to the fight كتب عليكم القتال وهو the هو goes back to the word قتال the هو goes back to the word قتال وليس يعود على ال... and it doesn't go back to the كتابة the obligation the هو هي أي وهو كره لكم أي هو القتال كره لكم the fighting is disliked to you not the obligation he said he goes back to that and then he explains that the believers do not dislike the obligation that they dislike the fighting and that's a grammatical explanation of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeer rahimahullah ta'ala point number two inshallah ta'ala point number two al mas'ala thaniya it is that to have knowledge at bi anna ma qalahu aw fa'alahu aw amara bihi aw naha anhu nabi the second point is that to have knowledge of whatever the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said or did or commanded or prohibited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's from the religion of Allah. Anything that the Prophet ﷺ did, anything that the Prophet ﷺ said, or he commanded, or he prohibited, alayhi salatu wasalam, mimma huwa min which is from the religion of Allah, sorry, which is from the religion of Allah. Anything that the Prophet said, that's from the religion. That is from the religion. And anything that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that's from the religion. And anything that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited that is from the religion, إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Then this becomes the command of Allah and the revelation sent from Allah. In, in, in other words, anything that the Prophet ﷺ does, that's from the religion. He doesn't do it out of his own nature. He does it for the, because of the religion. Or he says it because of that. Or he prohibits it because of that. Then this is a what? It's a command from Allah. It's a swahi from Allah. There are evidence for that. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ The Prophet does not speak from, him, from his whims and desires. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ Anything which he says is a revelation from Allah. Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 3 to Ayah 4. And Imam Al-Shanqitiyu, Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqitiyu, Rahimahullah, in his kitab, in his tafsir book, Al-Adwa', he says, Ma'naha, the meaning to this verse is أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Prophet لا يبلغ عن الله إلا شيئا أوحاه الله إليه أن يبلغه He said that the Prophet does not convey from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that which Allah has sent on to him as a revelation or that which Allah commanded him subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey. The second evidence to prove that whatever the Prophet said, or did, or commanded, or prohibited, مِمَّا هُوَ مِن دِينِ اللَّهِ which is from the religion of Allah, إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ وَوَحْيِ اللَّهِ The evidence for that is the second, sorry, the ayah in Surah An-Nisa, ayah 113, where Allah says, وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ Allah has sent down عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ unto you Muhammad the book and Allah has also sent unto you الْحِكْمَةَ the sunnah وَعَلَّمَكَ Allah has also taught to you مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ Allah has also taught you Muhammad that which you didn't know so Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tells us in this verse that he has sent unto the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the book, meaning the Quran. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ Allah has sent unto you الْكِتَابَ The book. وَالْحِكْمَةَ The sunnah. So the sunnah is sent from who? It's sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It came from Allah. That's why Hafidh al-Hakami rahimahullah, he says, 
فالسنة النبي وحي ثان عليه ما قد أطلق الوحيان وإنما طريقها الرواية فافتقر الراوي إلى الدراية that the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a second form of revelation it's a sunnah al-wahmi al-thani it's a second sunnah you know he took it from the ayah وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whatever he did or said it هذا وحي من الله تبارك وتعالى شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية he said in his مجموع الفتاوى the 19th volume page 82 he said قد أمرنا الله تعالى الله commanded us باتباع ما أنزل إلينا الله commanded us سبحانه وتعالى to follow that which has been sent on to us that which has been sent on to us من ربنا from our Lord وَبِالتِّبَاعِ and also to follow مَا يَأْتِي مِنْهُ whatever comes to him whatever comes to us from him سبحانه وتعالى من الهدى the guidance that comes to us from him for us to also follow وَقَدْ أَنْزَلَ عَلَيْنَا الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْرَةِ and Allah has sent on down to for us the book and the what? the sunnah كما قال تعالى as Allah said وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ Ibn Taymiyyah brings the ayah where Allah says remember the blessing of Allah عليكم unto you وَمَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ and remember the blessing of what Allah has sent unto you مِنَ الْكِتَابِ from the book وَالْحِكْمَةِ and the sunnah يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ which Allah reminds you through so the hikmah is the what? It is sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In ta'a kalamu, the speech of Ibn Taymi is finished there. He also said in the 19th volume, page 83 to 84, he said, وَقَدْ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِطَاعَةِ الرَّسُولِ That Allah commanded the obedience of the messenger. في نحو أربعين موضعا in forty different places in the Quran Allah commanded it سبحانه وتعالى كقوله تعالى like the statement of Allah قل أطيع الله أبي الله والرسول أبي the messenger فإن تولوا if you turn away فإن الله لا يحب الكافرين Allah does not like the disbelievers so Allah told us that those who don't obey any of the any of the, the two is a what? Is a kafir. Allah says, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ أَبَيْ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ أَبَيْ the messenger. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they turn away from any of those two, فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ The very Allah does not like the what? He does not like the disbelievers. Allah, He does not like the disbelievers. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah as his characteristics is he brought all the evidences that he mentioned that were in the Qur'an. If you want to see more about this, go to the kitab Jami' Bayan al-Ilmi wa Fadli. Go to the second volume. Uh, the from 1181 onwards. It's very important for the student of knowledge to go to that book. Jami' Bayan al Ilmi wa Fadli, the second volume, page 1181. The, uh, the athar that comes from there onwards, go to it and see what Ibn Abdul Bar brings, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. The third point, inshaAllah Ta'ala, Al Mas'alatu Tharitha, the third point. الأدلة على كفر من أبغض شيئا مما جاء به النبي. We're gonna now bring the evidences that prove that the person who dislikes that which the prophet came with is a disbeliever. And the dislike here we're talking about kur, which is shari, is like the statement of Allah that the author himself wrote ذلك بأنهم and that is. بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُ They disliked مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ That which Allah has sent down فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And this then what? 
It nullified their what? It nullified their righteous deeds. And the nullifying of uh, the righteous deeds, it's disbelief. The fact that the deeds are all nullified is what? It's an indica indication that this is what? It's disbelief. The second evidence is that one was in Surah to Muhammad, Ayah 9. The Shaykh brought that for you. Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Hab, he brought it. The second evidence is Allah wa Ta'ala, he said, Am yaquluna bihi jinnah. They say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is a person who is majnoon. Bal ja'ahum rather it has come to them I mean, he has come to them with Bal ja'ahum but rather he has come to them with Bil haqqi he has come to them with the truth Wa aktharuhum lil haqqi karihun and many of them, they dislike the truth that he's bringing forward, alayhi salatu wasalam. What he came to them with is the truth, and they dislike the truth. Surah Al-Mu'minun, ayah 70. Surah Al-Mu'minun, ayah 70. So Allah tells us in this ayah that they don't, want the t they don't want to take the truth. They're trying to say that the Prophet ﷺ is not sane. They're also trying to allude to the Prophet ﷺ as a person who is a fortune teller and a magician and etc. All of this is because they don't like the truth. Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 70. Allah also says Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in Surah Al-Munafiqeen. He says, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ About the Munafiqeen. When Allah was talking about Surah Al-Tawbah, sorry. Surah Al-Tawbah. Allah wa Ta'ala, He said about the Munafiqeen, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ They don't come to the prayer. Illa wahum kusala, except that they are lazy when they come to it. When they come to the salah, they come to it lazy. Wala yunfiquna, and they don't give. They don't give from what Allah has given them, the wealth that they have, they don't give from it. Illa wahum karihun, and if they do give it, they give it out in a state of dislike. Even if it happens that they give it, they dislike it. The disliking here is what? Kurhu, which is? Shara'i, they don't like Allah's command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Tawbah, ayah 54. Surah Al-Tawbah, ayah 50, 54. The fourth evidence is Allah ta'ala statement, which is Fariha al-Mukhallafuna. Fariha al-Mukhallafuna. Mukhallafun is what? Those who stayed back from the battle with the Munafiqeen who chose not to go with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to battle of what? Ghazwat Tabuk. They stayed back. They are called the Mukhallafun. They, don't want to part they didn't participate. They had no justified reason to stay back. So they stayed back, these Munafiqeen. So Allah says, Fariha. They became happy. The Munafiqeen, they were happy. Al-Mukhallafuna, those who stayed back from the battle. Bimak'adihim, they were happy with their place. Because you know the situation that they were in, they liked it. Khilafa Rasulillah, in leaving and staying back from the Prophet. They liked the idea that they didn't go to the battle. And they stayed at home and they did nothing. Wa karihu, and they disliked ayyujahidu bi amwalihim. And these munafiqeen disliked to fight in the what? with their wealth. وَأَنفُسِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they also disliked to fight with their soul, with their nafs. وَأَنفُسِهِمْ And their nafs فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ In the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this ayah tells us that they were happy with the evil that they were doing. Okay? And they were also what? They disliked that Ayyujahidu bi amwalihim for them to fight with what? For them to fight with their wealth and their nafs. In the cause of Allah they disliked it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Mas'alatu Rabi'ah. We're now gonna go on to the fourth point, inshaAllah ta'ala. 
which is bring the ijma' al-ulama'i ala kufri man abghad shay'an mimma ja'a bihi ar-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we're now going to bring the ijma' the consent because if you look at the kalam of the shaykh he said after he said man abghad shay'an mimma ja'a bihi ar-rasul walaw amina bihi kafara ijma'an والدليل قوله تعالى ذلك بأنهم كرهوا ما أنزل الله فأحبط عمله. We've done so far how many things? We've defined what the word كره means. So Sheikh Zaman أبغض شيئا. So we explain what that means. We also explain look مما جاء به الرسول. Why didn't he say the Quran? Why did he say that which a prophet came with? We explain the fact that there's a bond between that which a prophet came with. And the Quran itself, that they're the same. Good. We then went into speaking about the evidences from the Quran, which was the third point. The evidences from the Quran that the Shaykh provided, is this the only? Are there more to provide to show that a person who dislikes that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he sent down, and the Sunnah that the Prophet came with, is that they dislike it, that they're a disbeliever. Is there other evidences? We provided more evidences. Now we're going to move on to the statement of the Shaykh Kafara Ijma'an that these people become uh, disbelievers by consent. Where did he get this from? So we're going to provide the consent that the Shaykh brought and then inshallah ta'ala this naqir, this nullifier, we've given it explanation. The Ijma'ul Ulama, the consent of the scholars, and this issue is many. We'll just bring some. The first one of them is Al-Imam Al-Mardawi Rahimahullah in his Kitab Al-Insaf. He said in the 10th volume, page 283, the publication is Dar Al-Kutub Al-Ilmiyyah. He said, Qala Shaykh Taqiyuddin. Mardawi say this. He said, Qal al Shaykh Taqiyuddin. Meaning, referring to Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah. He said, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Mardawi say this. Law kana mubghidan lil rasuli sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, awli ma jaa bi kafara tifaqan. That Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah said, Law kana mubghidan, if somebody dislikes. لِرَسُولِ the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم أو لما جاء به or that which he came with كافارة اتفاق and this person becomes a disbeliever by agreement, by consent Isn't it fascinating how this statement was said by Ibn Taymiyyah and then Ibn Abdul Wahab, Muhammad Abdul Wahab took exactly the same wordings huh? That's why Muhammad Abdul Wahab a lot of his Statements are taken from Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim. The second person who brought the Ijma' is Al-Imam Ibn Battah Rahimahullah in his Kitab Al-Ibanat Al-Sughra. Ibn Battah has a Kitab called Al-Ibanat Al-Sughra, page 211. He says, Wujub al-Iman, it's obligatory to believe, wa tasdiq bi jami'i ma ja'at bihi al-rusul, everything that the messengers, everything that the messengers, Everything that the messengers came with, that the person believes in it. Min indillahi that they believe it's from Allah. They believe it's from Allah. Wa bi jamii ma qala Allah azza wa jalla and everything that Allah tabarak wa taala said. Fa wa haqq al lazimun that it's that it's a haqq and it's what and it's obligatory. فَلَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا آمَنَ بِجَمِيعِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ الرُّسُلِ Any, if anyone believes in all of the things that the messengers came with, إِلَّا شَيْئًا وَاحِدًا Except one thing, he says, only this thing, I don't, I don't believe it. كَانَ بِرَدِّ ذَلِكَ الشَّيْءِ His rejection of that one thing alone is, what? كَافِرًا He becomes a disbeliever because of it. عِنْدَ جَمِيعِ الْعُلَمَاءِ To all of the scholars. If a person comes and says, um, they come and they say, I 
believe everything that the Prophet Sallallahu came with. It's just this one issue I don't agree with him. The mere fact that the person just disagrees with that one thing is what? Biradi shay'in wahid. Just by rejecting one thing is kafiran in the jami'ul ulama'i. He's a kafir based on all of those scholars. Number three, Al-Imam Ibn Baz rahimahullah fi risalati in his letter or in his essay, his little risala, little small book, which he called Wujub al-Amri bi sunnati al-Rasul, that is obligatory to follow the sunnah of the Prophet wa kufri, wa kufri, and that it's disbelief, man ankara had the first and rejects it. This is, this is, you can find this uh, risala, you can find this risala in his Majmu' Fatawa, first volume, page 219 to 220, Tawatul Maktabatul Ma'arif. This is what he said. He said, Wahuma, they both are. He's talking about what? Al Kitab was Sunnah. The Kitab and the Sunnah, both of them are Aslani Multazimani. Sorry, Aslani Mutalazimani. The Kitab and the Sunnah are two foundations which are both necessary. Man jahada wahidan minhuma. Anyone who rejects any of the two, he rejects the Kitab or the Sunnah. فَقَدْ جَحَدَ الْآخَرْ He has then rejected the other. If a person says, I take the Qur'an, but I don't take the Sunnah, then he's rejected the Qur'an as well. Uh, don't think to yourself, he's rejected this one and he's rejected the other. He's rejected both of them. وَكَذَبَ uh, بِهِ He disbelieves in both of them. وَذَلِكَ كُفْرٌ وَالضَّلَالَ This is disbelief and misguidance. وَخُرُوجَ عَنْ دَائِرَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِإِجْمَعِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْإِيمَانِ And this is what? Leaving the fold of Islam by consensus of the people of knowledge and Iman. And if you want, you can more look into this. The Risala to Kalimat al Nafi'ah, which is inside the Majmu'u al Tawheed al Najdiyya. And of course, the Kitab Kashaf al Qanna'ah, you can, you can find that as well. Another fifth mas'ala I wanted to speak about, is, inshallah ta'ala, is some of the statements of the scholars. Uh, I'm going to mention, inshallah ta'ala, two scholars, inshallah where they mention the kufr of the person who dislikes a matter from the religion. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says in his kitab al-Sarim al-Maslul, page 523, the Taba'a Darul al He says, man qala, If a person says, I don't accept this. He says, I don't accept this. Bidalika, I don't accept this thing, which he's referring to is the Sharia. وَلَا أَلْتَزِمُ who And I don't, I'm not in line with it. وَأُبْغِضُ هَذَا الْحَقْ And I reject this truth. وَأَنْفُرُ عَنْهُ And I find repulsion towards it. فَالتَّكْفِيرُ هَذَا مَعْلُومُ The kufr of this person is known بِلِلْضِرَارِ by necessity. مِنْ دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ From the religion of Islam. وَالْقُرْآنِ The Qur'an is what? مَمْلُوءٌ مِنْ تَكْفِيرِ مِثْلِ هَذَا النَّوْعِ The Qur'an is full of making takfir on this type of individual. And Imam al-Suyuti in the Muqaddimah of his kitab Miftah al-Jannah fi al-Ihtijaj bi sunnah he said, I'lamu naw, rahimakum Allah, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala have mercy onto you, anna man, ak, anna man ankara, anyone who rejects, kawna haditha ran Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he rejects that the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qawlan kana aw fi'lan, he rejects it either by speech or action, بشرطه المعروف في الأصول حجة with the conditions that are known كفر وخرج عن دائرة الإسلام this person leave the fold of Islam وحشر مع اليهود والنصارى and he will be resurrected with the Christians and the Jews أو مع من شاء أو whatever he wills Allah تبارك وتعالى من فرق الكفر from the groups of disbelievers whichever of those Allah wants he will bring them out with him but meaning he's not from the believers this is something ulama qarnan ba'da qarn generation after generation they would always emphasize this and then this teaches us that anybody who rejects or dislikes as Muhammad Abdul Habib has said man abghadha shay'an a matter imagine anyone who rejects the sunnah in totality he says i don't take the hadith of the prophet i only take the quran and i'm a muslim this person is not a muslim he's a kafir if you want to look more into this issue, this naqil, go to the kitab 
الكتاب المحلع لابن حزم اوكي التفسير الشوكاني when he came to the ayah 50 of surah at-tawbah the ayah that i mentioned and tafsir ibn kathir ayah 50 and surah al-kawthar as well ibn kathir go to his tafsir surah al-kawthar when he speaks about it as well ibn kathir rahimahullah ta'ala he expands on this issue as well and there's many other places you can find more researches on this issue we'll conclude there inshallah ta'ala Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.